obviously a hard fought, a hard fought game. You know, you go into overtime, you know, up, I think 13 with six minutes to play. And that's where we kind of let our guard down a little bit. Uh, had a couple of defensive lapses, uh, bad turnovers. Um, and then we had shots that didn't fall. So the combination of those three and all of a sudden you got a ball game. Um, so just trying to find a way when we find ourselves in those situations uh, to just pull away with it. Um, and I told those guys, you know what? I got to help them because there's a situation where we had um, a timeout and we got the ball in, but it led to a turnover. You know, if I take the timeout, maybe it helped get us organized a bit. And we had a foul to give and we didn't take it and wound up being, uh, you know, free throws. So keeping, uh, keeping those guys organized on both ends in those special situations, I think will, will benefit, benefit us going forward. It's an experience where, um, what you say at halftime? Because, you know, you guys are still down at that point. And then KCP came out and got hot. Um, thought you guys kind of rallied from that it, it wasn't anything, you know, showed a few clips as far as things we, you know, we could clean up. But then the message was they were playing with more desperation than we were. And they've been struggling, but yet so have we. So who wants it more? Listen, you just talk about really the championship DNA of Coos and obviously KCP. I think he had first four shots in that third quarter and then Coos closed the show. Uh, you know, to, that, to their credit, they played in big, big moments. Um, in big games. So I don't think they're phased by much. They've been in every situation I'm sure is possible um, and been down, been up, you know, so finding a way to win, they've, they've been through those situations. Um, I think it'd be good for our overall team growth uh, to have guys like that, but also, you, you know, you can trust them. You know, it might get lost tomorrow, but Denny's start was amazing. Just kind of just looking at the balance that you were able to get offensively. Is that what you're looking for? At least trying to get these guys back to where they were with the guys in Tennessee. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, when you get that balance, you know, it, it's of course going to be top heavy at times. But you know, when you have that second unit play at a high level, there's not a ton of drop off. I think that's when we're really good. Chase. Wes, uh, how big was it to have Daniel Gafford come back, uh, you know, after that injury and play as well as he did? Oh, he was tremendous. You know, he, he, I didn't think he was going to be able to come back, honestly. Um, they worked on him at halftime, and he said he was going to give it a try. Um, and to his credit, he was able to gut it out. Uh, we needed him on the floor, and uh, he had some great possessions, switching, you know, keeping the guy in front, making plays at the rim. Uh, so I give him a lot of credit for that. There was a huge, huge uh, free throw disparity in the first half. Was it a matter of just things evening out, or is there something you guys did different in the second half to catch up? Well, I mean, they were ultra aggressive in that first half, and we know that's who they are. That's how they play. They're top three in free throw rate. So they're going to put their head down. They're going to keep going. And whether they're fouls or not, they're putting themselves in position to get the call. So we had to be mindful of, hey, try to defend without fouling, but let's also turn up our aggression. Um, let's be more – Downhill, stay in attack mode. And I thought it, you know, played in our favor in the second half. Josh. Wes, I know you're happy to get the win and uh, really there's no such thing as an ugly win, but how disconcerting was it that the Pistons closed out regulation on a 16-3 run against your, your starting five? I mean, it happens, you know, it, it's, it's not for uh, the lack of effort. Um, I thought we had some good looks that didn't go in. Um, that team's never going to quit. To their credit, they keep playing. They, they've shown that uh, ability all season. Hasn't always uh, tipped in their favor, but you know I, I have to give them a lot of credit for staying in the game. Uh, it, it doesn't concern me um, a lot. Obviously, we have to look at it and, and understand why. But I, th I think the offense was trying to create the right right types of shots. We just didn't make. Them. What did you see from Spencer in the overtime? Uh, he had two assists, both leading to threes, including Kyle's go-ahead three. He had a three of his own as, and, a, and a steal. I mean, just overall poise. I mean, he's, he's a guy who's been around. He understands the game. He reads it well. Um, he's able to help keep us organized in those, in those stretches. We know we're going to play through him, play through Brad. Um, and a lot of guys will benefit from that. You know, it's typical of that last play. Teams are up and aggressive. Um, Gaff rolls. They find him in the pocket. He makes the right kick out, and Spence makes the extra pass. Obviously, uh, you know, Koo steps up, makes a huge shot. So, obviously, the, the, those situations aren't unique. But you know, I think uh, 
with Brad and Spencer on the floor, both those guys are kind of quarterbacking uh, our overall presence. How close did you and your assistant coaches come to any substantial rotation changes heading into this game? None really. Um, it was just more of let's do it, do it better, because um, we've we've done it before with the same group. So uh, of course we have to continue to re reevaluate things as this, you know as the season plays out. But um, we've dropped four in a row. I don't think it's the end of the world. It's not where we want to be. But we also were ten in, in three in our first thirteen games. So. I don't know if it's uh, if we're that good uh, or we are as bad as we have been the last four games. I think we're probably somewhere on the uh, you know left side of that spectrum. Thank you, Neil. Hey, Coach. You guys have had turnover issues. You know, at varying points so far this season through twenty six games. Can you see any common threads that are leading to those? Yeah, I mean, nightly it's some of the same situations where. Over dribbling, we're playing in crowds. Um, we're not getting off the ball in a timely manner. We're not spaced correctly. Um, and sometimes each of those categories um, are more heavily weighted from quarter to quarter. Um, and just like the other night in Indiana, it's, it wasn't the sheer volume of turnovers. It was 12 for the game. But uh, we didn't show a lot of resilience once we turned it over. We allowed 21 uh, points off those turnovers. 12 overall is not a bad number. It's just the, the volume of points that we're giving up. And Trez only played four minutes in the second half. What was the thought process there? Um, nothing really. I mean, I thought Trez was great. I just don't, uh, I like the group that we had out there. We just rode, rode that group. And kind of an off ball question. Do you think that the challenge rule should change such that if you win your challenge, you get to keep it? Well, you do, unless it's your mandatory. So I know it's, a, it's one of those things, you know, kind of confusing at times, but, um, you know, I think the challenge with coaches is the uh, possession challenge where you, you can challenge a foul throughout the game, um, but, you know, you only have one, so you need to hold on to it, you know, if, if you want uh, and need that situation late in, the, late in the game or in overtime to, to challenge for, for possession. Uh, so that probably the only change I think, you know, that's on, on the docket. Thanks, Coach. Safe travels back. Thank you. Last question, Wayne. How you doing, Coach? Uh, could you just talk about how pivotal Anthony Gill's minutes was tonight? Uh, Edgy was he was tremendous. I mean, you know, doesn't get a lot of credit for what he brings daily. His energy, his enthusiasm. He's always kind of like the first guy in the gym. He's got a good spirit about him, very competitive. Um, and he always stays ready. Uh, and to his credit, he came out and impacted the game for us tonight. We wanted to go small. They were small. Uh, tried to stay in our switches, um, which you know proved proved uh, beneficial for us. And he he played a big role. And lastly, coach, like you said, it just came down to who wanted it. But with a, a young team like the Pistons, uh, what kind of things were you know after seeing them live were you know surprised at the things they just do good that other people usually just look over because of the record? Uh, just how how hard they compete. I mean, it's easy to fall into that you know that sense of you know playing a team's record, but they, these guys play, they play hard. Um, they play together and they, they keep coming at you. So it's not, there's never an easy win in the NBA. And I think at times you're fighting human nature. Uh, if you pay attention to box, box scores or you're looking at, you know, standings, maybe you fall into that trap, you know? So it, it's just kind of a cautionary tale. You can never assume these, these guys are going to keep coming at you. Adversity tonight, you know, what do you guys take away from much needed win like this? Uh, First place, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it was just a good, good win, man. We just uh, we battled it out. Uh, wasn't pretty, but you know we did everything necessary uh, to win the game. So you know it's definitely had to talk to our guys, man. We worked worked tremendously hard the whole night, you know, uh, and it wasn't easy. Hats off to Detroit. You know we're kind of both in the same little funk. You know they're trying to find their find their way out of their little funk, and we were trying to do the same. So. Uh, you know, they came out very aggressive, um, kind of hit us first, and we responded well. You know, we, we did a good job staying poised. Pope came out in the third and really gave us a great lift. Um, and, you know, we closed it out down the stretch. Is there value in going through some of these situations like this where, you know, still a relatively new team together? Uh, for sure. You know, it's always a – you learn something every game. You know, that at least that's a goal. 
we're going into it. You know, it's we still have a lot we can clean up. Still, we got a lot we can get better at. Uh, but we, we competed the whole night. You know, uh, granted they made some tough shots down the stretch. You know, we gotta stop turning the ball over, especially my ass. Um, but you know, we we did everything we needed to do to win. You know, we stayed poised, made big shots down the stretch. Got to do it. Uh, I mean, those are, I mean, like you just said, those two guys have rings, you know, so they know what it takes to play down the stretch, to be in those close games, uh, in those clutch moments. And, you know, uh, down the stretch, they're going to double me, you know, uh, which I knew they were going to do. And I just tell our bigs to be ready to catch and make a play. And everybody else be ready to shoot because somebody's going to be open, whether it's Pope, Cool, Spence, somebody's going to be open. And each of them hit a big shot down the stretch for us. So uh, it was another night for Cools. Cools stepped up, even missed the one before that, but he shot the next one with confidence and knocked it down, you know. So uh, we just were figuring it out, you know. Uh, like I said, not everything is pretty, but, uh, you know, being able to trust guys in late in games is always, it's always a great feeling. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's times. I mean, it's a long year. You know, we're all human beings. We we have days in which it's tough for us to go to work. You know, it's tough for us to be out. You know, uh, but you know, it's 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 Sometimes it happens to me. Sometimes it's necessary. Uh, it wasn't like that necessarily tonight. They actually, not a lot, actually it kind of was. They started chirping a little bit in the first half and that kind of got us going. So, yeah. What are your I love Kay. I love Kay. I was always a fan of his in high school. Like, uh, I coached AAU basketball. We played him. I used to always watch him on AYBL circuit. So, I, I, was, I knew he was a pro before. He probably knew he was a damn pro. So uh, to see him now is is very, it's crazy. It makes me feel old, but it also is is enlightening to see one the grassroots level and how well we take care of our high school kids and how we're pushing them um, to get to this level and maximize their potential. And then two, uh, it's all about Kate. You know that's his dream. It's his goal. Uh, ultimately, he put in the work to get to where he is. He deserves every single uh, ounce of success he he achieves. Um, and I'm happy that he's healthy and he's, he's out here leading his team, you know, as a rookie, he has heart, he has toughness, he has confidence, you know, that's all stuff that you need. Uh, but I told him after the game, just keep going, stay humble, stay hungry. Uh, cause he's going to be, he's going to be a problem for years to come. That's for sure. Uh, initially, but he wasn't barking at me. Uh, he was barking though. I, he wasn't barking at me. I was just trying to figure out what was going on. It was a lot of, it was a lot of, it was a lot of talking, but I didn't, when none was really directed towards me. So I was just, I kind of fed off the energy of my teammates and everybody, then the refs, everybody, everybody. It was just a wild game. It was just a wild game. You know, uh, everybody was a little chippy. Everybody was a little emotional. So, and everybody wanted to win. I think that's just what it came down to. Both teams just trying to find a win. And uh, the chippiness got in into it. But, you know, that's that's the league. One last question. Uh, question. Uh, your return and your return with Jumpman. Kind of cool uh, re with Jumpman was – uh, man, beyond important. We've been working diligently to get this done. Uh, and it's a, it's a blessing, man, because we all know how exclusive that group is. And I always say it's like an elite mob, like mafia type group. Like you gotta, you gotta be in the family to get in the family. Like, you know, so, um, uh, to have that welcome from Mike, you know, that official, you know, I want you back, you know, that's, that's, uh, that means the world. And, uh, but two, it's motivation, you know, to continue to, build on the brand, uh, continue to respect it, wear it with pride, uh, and then produce on the floor. You know, ultimately, that's what he did. That's what he stood for, you know, so. The logo, uh, so I drew a lot of sketches early on, uh, and then I actually hired Rare Design, a team down in Bama, uh, who does amazing design work, and they came up with a few silhouettes and a few logos, and it was a, it was a big process over the past, I would say, year. Uh, and they worked extremely hard to get this thing done. And it's, uh, I love it. I love every, every bit of the logo.
Chase. Hey Brad, I know a lot of a lot uh, transpired after, but how big was it for uh, KCP to come out and score the first ten points for you guys in the third quarter? That was huge, man. I think he, uh, I think we, he got off to a little slow start um, in the beginning of the game, uh, but he stayed poised, he stayed with it, and he made the first shot. And I think I ran the next four plays to him, like, and I think he scored on all of them. And uh, that's that's just what that's what we need, you know. Uh, he provided a spark for us. Somebody's hot, got to keep giving him the ball. You know, no matter who it is, you know, he's hot, especially our shooters. You know, we got to really get our shooters going. We got to get our percentages up. Uh, and us guards got to be better at penetrating and finding easier shots for our for our shooters. And, uh, you know, so when Pope, Pope gets going, you know, it's important he he sees it again. You know, he touches it again. Uh, and so, you know, he did that. He, he carried us. He brought us back into the game. I think we were down eight at half. He brought us back. We were up two. And uh, we kind of just took it over from there. And uh, Coach Unseld said he didn't think that uh, Daniel Gafford was going to be able to come back in the game. And then, you know, he had five blocks uh, after he came back. Just uh, how important was that for you guys? Oh, it was huge, man, because we definitely – we at halftime they told us he wasn't he wasn't coming back. Uh, and so we, we went with Trez and we I think even told Kuz, like, be ready to play some five, be ready to rebound because uh, we're going to need him. Uh, but, you know, to see Gav back out there shows his – his toughness, man, uh, you know, he works extremely hard on his body and taking care of it. And, uh, you know, to see his toughness get back out there, get five blocks after that, was that's huge. You know, we need his presence at all times. And uh, everybody, man, it just goes down a lot. You know, it just shows, you know, this tonight was a really, really big gut check win for us. Last question to Josh. Brad, um, people like me, I and I suppose, you know, reporters and then people watching at home are always interested to see, you know, what happens at halftime, right? Um, can you can you describe whether anything gets said at a halftime like that, where you guys are not playing the way you want to play, or um, the degree to which you guys speak among each other? Uh, honestly, today it was. I think our only message was stop turning the ball over and stop fouling. Uh, because they were shooting a lot of free throws. And uh, we understood that that was kind of the only thing beating us. They weren't beating us with anything else. We just kept following them. We were jumping on every pump fake, um, just sending them to the line, you know? So we literally just told each other, like, we know what we need to do. They're gonna, we're in the game. We went on a nice little run in the, you know, in the half. But, uh, you know, for us to be the team we need to be, we, we have to stop fouling. We got to guard without fouling. And uh, because we do that, we're not playing against a set defense. You know, we're giving ourselves a chance, you know, in transition, uh, you know, give ourselves advantages on the offensive end. Uh, so it was just more or less take care of the ball uh, and stop fouling. And we did that. We came out more aggressive on the defense. We came out, got like four stops in a row, four or five stops in a row. And we converted on those. And I think that's another big difference. We'd, uh, in the past, we haven't converted on our turnovers and on our defensive stops, you know, and I think we did that tonight. You know better than anybody what it takes to have a shooter's mentality. What do you, what do you make of Kyle's shooter's mentality, given how he's made some big threes down the stretches of some tight games? Uh, my dad always taught me amnesia. You know, I think Kyle has that. You know, it's just the last shot is the last shot. Whether you made it, whether you missed it, you know, um, and it's on to the next one. Uh, and I think more or less it's him being in the moment, staying in the moment. You know, not being too high, not being too low. Uh, you know, obviously being ready, you know, in those situations is a big factor too. You know, he doesn't shy away from those moments. And uh, that's key for us because now you have, we have four or five guys who want to take the shot, who will take the shot at the end of the game. Um, so to know we have that, you know, it makes my job easy. You know, if I don't have it, I can get off it and, you know, let somebody else, you know, take the shot. So it's cool. How did you just take us through that last uh, sequence, last shot? Um, yeah, you know, we, um, you know, just try to get the, you know, best shot possible, um, have Brad up there trying to have him make a play in the game. And, uh, you know, he got off this bench made, uh, the right play with my guy stunting to him and, um, you know, the ball found me and I just hit the shot. Oh yeah. No, that moment, that meant everything to me. Um, you know, honestly, outside of winning the championship, you know, that was everything. You know, coming home, growing up Pistons fan, 
and um, hitting a game winner on that floor uh, with my mom there. I mean, you know, that's like a full circle moment. So uh, that made everything. Kind of before the game, you wore a shirt that was really significant for this community. Can you describe how many of your thoughts of doing that? And what did it feel like having to come home, close to home, close to home? Um, man, I honestly, I got a lot of thoughts. So, uh, you know, forgive me if this is not clear. Um, you know, it's just, you know, tragic that, you know, you know, thinking about parents and thinking about having kids and uh, having to send your kids to school and never seeing them again. Um, you know, that's just, you know, such a really, really sad moment. And, um, you know, I think it just talks a lot about you know, gun violence in America and just how easy it is, you know, to access um, these semi-automatic type of, you know, guns and, you know, let alone, um, you know, a kid. Um, you know, if you look at his parents, um, you know, obviously I believe people, you know, you should have guns, you know, it's, it's a safety measure, but um, it shouldn't be that easy, especially for a, a child and, and, and parents, you know, it, it's on them. Um, you know, it's, it's just crazy. You know, it's just crazy. It's crazy. So, um, no, I, I think that, you know, there, there are responsibility for parents out there. If, if you're going to, you know, give children's gun, um, you know, you have to live with those um, consequences as well. And, flip side of it um you know mental health is a it's a real thing it's a real thing in this world and it, you know and granted i don't know everything about the situation you know I, i've tried to do as much research as i can but um you know uh, the school and you know the kid the kid wrote a letter you know talking about help me and you know this world is dead and you know you know i think i think parents and, and people should you know recognize these signs in, in America, in, in our society today, and understand that, you know, there are people out there crying for help, but at the same time, that doesn't mean take people's lives, you know, um, you know, it's just a real sad situation, honestly, and for me, I just wanted, obviously, being from here, Oxford's not that far from where I live, um, you know, probably 25, 30 miles, but, you um, yeah, my heart is out there for, you know, those families that lost, um, you know, their children. They can never see their children. They can never touch and hold them again. You know, it's just, it's real sad, so. And really unfortunate to transition to a game, right? But to come home and hit a big time shot like that, a la Cleveland, it's just corner foods. I mean, what are we, what are we calling it? I don't know what to call it. Uh, you know, I, I just love, you know, these type of moments, um, you have an opportunity to hit game winners. You know, that's what you dream of as, as a kid. You know, when you're in your bedroom playing on your hoop on the wall, you know, it's three, two, one. You know, that's just what you live for. So, um, you know, I, I want those moments and I'm ready for those moments. I put a lot of work in. Chase. Hey, Kuza, you also had a big shot. Uh, I think it was in the fourth quarter and kind of raised your hand to your ear. I'm just wondering who, who was that to and why? Oh, uh, you know, just fans, you know, they just always be talking shit to me every game. <laughs> um, so I love it. You know, I love hearing it. You know, it, I, it gets me going. And um, yeah, you know, it's what it is. And uh, Daniel Gafford, um, you know, Beal said that you guys were told he wasn't going to return and, and then he does return and has five blocks. Just how big was that for you guys? Yeah. I mean, he came back out like he was a Willis Reed or somebody um, came out the tunnel, came out five blocks, you know, it was big. Um, you no, know, and even, you know, finished the game, you know, obviously, um, you know, had a little tough stretch at the end with Kate, you know, getting to the rim and fighting those stretch, uh, switches, but um, you know, just talks about how, you know how dedicated he is, how much he wants to win, and um, how important you know we are to him. 
you know, and he feels like he needs to be out there and, you know, play the big game for us.